Yeah, we probably aren't as smart as the Egyptians. Yes. It's m really likely that what they had figured out, again, it's probably, a, it's probably hard for us to understand what kind of technology they used mm -hmm. because it doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. We're probably not as smart as the Egyptians, says Joe Rogan, and maybe he's right. But what Joe specifically means is that ancient Egyptians were a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Today on Crunch, we're diving deep into the world of enigmas, exploring the 10 most insane pyramid theories from the iconic Joe Rogan experience. Well, some of them, the, the granite in the Great Pyramid comes from more than 500 miles to the south. Um, if you look at the famous King's Chamber, its walls and its roof are, uh, the, the ceiling of the King's Chamber, are all made with gigantic uh, granite blocks. Stunning They're, detail. Stunning detail. Those, those blocks on the, King's on the roof of the King's Chamber weigh 70 tons each. But that's maybe because Graham Hancock in particular loves to think outside the box. And he sometimes comes back with some theories that sometimes cause more uproar than they do applause. Now, when Graham Hancock casually let slip that he believes that the ancient Egyptians used telekinesis to move the massive stones of the pyramids into place, Joe Rogan stayed almost uncharacteristically quiet. But Graham Hancock had plenty more to say in his place. Yes, Graham put forward the theory that the ancient Egyptians were able to use their minds both to cut and to move the huge stones needed to build the pyramids, particularly the incredibly heavy granite stones used to build the five chambers above the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid. According to Graham, to learn this new skill set, the ancient Egyptians had most certainly used psychedelic drugs to open up their mind. But of course. Joe Rogan agrees that some sort of incredibly advanced technology was used to cut and move the stones, and here's why. I really I don't know could. if you could. I think we could. Do you know if you cut and place 10 stones a, a day, yeah. it would take you 664 years to make the pyramid? That might be wrong. It's, but there's 2,300,000 stones mm. in the Great Pyramid. Mm. You need to go, man. I know, I do. You need to go. It was, it was the craziest thing that I've seen that humans have made. He believes that this all means that the people who built the pyramids knew something we didn't, had access to something we didn't, and were just smarter than we are in many, many different ways. Randall will tell you, uh, sea level rise, it creates a powerful high energy zone. Mm -hmm. Anything that was existing on those, on those flooded coastlines has just been pounded to hell. I mean, talk about it, Randall. Now, Graham's friend and colleague, Randall Carlson, put forward a different theory on how the ancient Egyptians built the pyramids thousands and thousands of years ago, when engineers and architects today have a hard time wrapping their collective heads around it. Randall believes and later explained to a highly captivated Joe Rogan that the ancient Egyptians had access to something we didn't have, and they knew how to use it too. According to him, the ancient Egyptians knew how to harness the power of sound and frequencies, and they use that to both cut and lift the stones of the pyramids. Graham Hancock quickly supported this theory, saying that there was evidence of something like this being possible in historical records, both showing and saying that priests would continuously chant while the stones were being lifted. Now, perhaps some of the reasons why Joe is so worried about this happening to us has to do with Randall Carlson and Graham Hancock again. Randall has spent a lot of time, energy, and resources tracking and pinning down evidence of previous meteor collisions along the Earth's surface, and traces of what he believes to be a massive flash flood that reshaped the face of the planet as we know it. And he's not alone. Graham Hancock has done his own work and collected his own evidence, much of which can be seen during his Netflix series, to prove what he believes to be a mass extinction event that almost completely wiped out humanity. What Graham and other professionals from different fields believe happened actually has very little to do with the ancient Egyptians as we know and think of today, but with a different civilization entirely. The condensed common consensus is that the people who built the pyramids and the Sphinx lived about 4,000 years ago. However, Graham argues that the ancient Egyptians from around 2500 BC merely discovered and restored structures that were already there. He believes that the people who actually built some of the greatest wonders of the ancient world existed long before the pharaohs and the gods of ancient Egypt. And it was a mass extinction event that wiped this far older, more technologically advanced, mysterious civilization from the history books and our living memories too. 
Now, the next logical step to all this is to go digging, both in the real world and in historical records, for evidence to prove that any of this actually happened. But in one clip from the Joe Rogan experience, Joe shares his thoughts and fears when it comes to both the past and the future. Joe explained that he believes it's entirely possible that something like a meteor wiped out the people who built the pyramids. That's why there are no traces of their technology left for us to find or any records for how they did what they did. But that wasn't all Joe had to say. He admitted in a rather somber moment on the show that he has spent a lot of time thinking and fearing the possibility of something similar happening to us. If that's the case, Joe believes that the world as we know it and humanity as we know it would be completely wiped from the map and everything we know would be lost to history too. Graham believes and Joe agrees that the world that this unknown incredibly advanced civilization knew was far different to the one that we live in today, particularly in Northern Africa. These people who could maybe harness the power of the mind or unleash the true potential of the spoken word didn't live in the desert. The Egypt that they knew was lush and green, a vast expansive oasis that spread throughout the city that we know as Cairo today. That was the land that gave birth to the people who were capable of coming up with this incredibly advanced, almost logic-defying technology. And that was the landscape where the Sphinx and maybe even the pyramids were built. But again, if all of that is true, then where's the evidence of this advanced technology? Why haven't we found bits and pieces of it or just something to definitively prove that it really existed? Joe, Randall, and Graham have an explanation for that too. Humanity as we know it today has advanced and progressed along one branch of technology. The mysterious unknown civilization that built the pyramids progressed along a different one. Yeah. Because we're thinking of technology only as technology that we've implemented, yeah. like these microphones and yeah. cell phones and shit. But it's possible there was a completely different branch of technology, yeah. and they had figured out something that allowed them to manipulate enormous stones. Yeah. We just haven't figured it out yet. I mean, just think about Graham Hancock agrees and says that the reason we haven't found this ancient technology is because we're looking for ourselves in the past. But Randall had something else to say about the possibility of our ancestors using a different branch of technology that we use today. He argues that maybe, just maybe, someone in our not-too-distant past had caught on to something, and that person was Nikola Tesla. Randall believes that it's possible that Tesla had rediscovered something from the past, potentially the exact technology that had been used to build the pyramids. But if that's the case, then where is it and why don't more people know about it today? Well, there is an easy answer for that one too. Randall and Graham argued that many of Tesla's patents had been bought and then suppressed by businessmen and people within Western governments. I mean, what they did in Africa to this day is the, one of the most puzzling things that archaeologists have to, to ponder. Yeah. Like how? What is this insanely sophisticated society that existed that built these structures and left behind no, no record of how they did it? Yeah. But Joe has his own theories on why we simply don't have the evidence to prove this technology existed. And he says we have no one to blame but ourselves. The records existed at one point in time. The proof and explanations for how the pyramids had been built and the literal tons of stones had been transported all across North Africa did too, we just lost them. Specifically, we lost them when Julius Caesar besieged the city of Alexandria and set fire to the Great Library of Alexandria. Some sources say that around 40,000 scrolls filled with ancient knowledge were lost to the flames. And Joe argues that it took exactly the evidence that we are looking for with them. Joe Rogan keeps himself busy. He's done pretty much everything from wrestling to hosting the TV series Fear Factor. But most of us probably know him from the Joe Rogan Experience, a show that has seen hundreds of guests come and go and all of them have plenty to say about just about everything. But two of the guests that Joe has had come back to his show time and time again over the last eight years have split both the archaeological community and the internet right down the middle. Randall Carson is perhaps most known for his podcast, The Cosmographia Podcast, 
where he takes over 16 hours to talk just about his theories on the lost city of Atlantis. And then there's Graham Hancock, a man who had his very own Netflix special, Ancient Apocalypse, where he discusses his theories on ancient civilizations from around the world and what he thinks potentially destroyed them. Oh, and he had Joe over on the series to talk about it too. So yes, you can find Joe Rogan on Netflix. And when these three men get together on any show on any platform, the topic usually comes back around to the pyramids and the people who built them. They put their collective minds and experiences together to come up with theories and explanations for some of history's greatest mysteries. But you won't find very much of anything they have to say in the history books at school either. So you could say that Joe Rogan's theory about the pyramids today is the theory that Graham and Randall are actually right. So are the ancient civilizations that we know today a lot older than we thought they were? Are they actually the younger and newer version of an even more ancient and possibly more technologically advanced people that came before them? What do you think? Are the theories we saw today genius or do we all just need to remind ourselves to stay open-minded and to keep thinking outside the box? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time on Crunch.